Namaste. How's it going? Before you control the flow of your breath, and before doing, for example, meditation, I recommend spending a few weeks knowing your natural breath. And then just doing simple asana so you can sustain the duration of that journey, like the preparatory stage to meditation. Yeah. So first position you can learn and practice is this, the Sukhasana. You're just crossing the legs. If your hips feel heavy, you can do a supported sitting with an elevation, maybe yeah, your pillow or a yoga block. You know, you can just fold your blanket. Yeah, so your knees and the hips are open. Okay. And then hand gestures. You may place your hands, yeah, and then contouring the hollow part of our palms and the rounded bones of the knees. You can even massage as yeah, so you work your breath and awareness. Or you can practice the Dhyana Mudra. Yeah, Dhyana Mudra is a mudra for meditation. Dhyana means you know, the meditative part with the right hand on top of the left and our hands or the thumbs touch, like you're forming a cup and the elbows rest under your shoulders. Okay, the spine is tall and the head is relaxed. Yes. And then looking down to your heart without squeezing the throat and just feeling the breath. So together with this lesson, I've written the principles of the breath, but let's summarize that. Yeah, as you inspire the breath in, yeah, and the cool sensation rises. You feel the breath lift you know, towards the nasal cavity and your eyes magnetize the optic muscles, you know, the nerves, like you're looking between the eyebrows, and the sound of the inhalation rhymes to the sa. And there's a mild suspension at the natural pause at the top of the breath. And exhale through the nose. You feel the moist, warm air exiting your nostrils. And the sound is denser and low and humming like the ha. The sa and the ha. Don't alter the breath. So just breathe to your potential. If you watch your breath, if you follow the breath, and together with the qualities of the breath, your pattern will just increase. Inhaling and feeling the texture. Yes, the breath has a texture. How fluid and how open you know, the breath rises and fills you inside. And how soft and gentle the breath exits and the outer body softens. Like as you inspire the breath in, you open, you expand, and you lift. And as you exhale, you soften, relax, but you don't crouch, you don't slouch. Okay. The breath also has an image, yes. If you hover your eyes in front of your eyelids, you may see this radiance coming close to you. Meditate or... Uh, just observe that radiance, might be filled with thoughts, yeah, but predominantly you can feel this light hovering, you can see the light hovering. And as you exhale, yeah, the heart and the eyes relaxes to the, relax to the eyes, yeah, and the image dims a bit. Yeah. And, and invoke some goodness. Yeah. As you inspire the breath in, the heart shines like your body goes bright yeah, to this radiance, yeah, like you emit it from the heart. And as you exhale, yeah, your outer body softens, yeah, and the brain decompresses. That's actually what happens. Yeah? The brain compresses as you inhale, and the exhale decompresses the brain. Yeah, so that's the basic yeah, principle. Yeah, what's important is you do the techniques sustainable. Yeah, so kasana, yeah, mindful breathing, and everyone can do that. What if this position is difficult for you? If you're sustaining knee or low back injury and this is not possible, yes, you can do the chair. Okay, the chair with back support. Okay, so sitting on that chair, 
You can even place what something under your feet so your lower back is resting comfortably. Good. And if uh, there's this back support, or if you feel like it's hollow at the back, so you can place maybe another yeah, pillow there so you can keep your spine upright. Or if you have that you know, back support for the chair, which is flat and long, you can just rest. Yeah, but the idea is to not slouch. You're keeping your spine upright and open. So place something there to keep your spine yeah, open. And then your hands resting on your knees. Or you can do yeah, the Dhyana Mudra between your legs. And then perform the rest of your practice. So, how long? So, I recommend the first month, yeah, if you can do it every day. Yeah. It could be uh, your bedside. Yeah, it could be a separate uh, place. You know, location in your house. Maybe you have your own meditation yoga space there. Yeah, you can do that too. Uh, to that dedicated location. What's important is consistency, and it's good to do it at the same time at the same spot. Yeah, especially while you are building the practice. Yeah, ten minutes. What's ten minutes? You may set an alarm. Yeah, and then when it sounds off, you can do a few more and then get up. Yeah, and then increasingly, yeah, you may add what? Yeah, well, remain 10 minutes for your meditation or your natural breath awareness practice. And instead of lengthening the duration, why don't you try to do the asana now? So if you can allot, for example, 30 minutes per day, so first do your natural breath and then do some asana and have given many tutorials about a beginner's asana, you can do that 15 minutes, and then relax in the shavasana. Good, and then progressively, you know, through time, your body will open up and you'll be able to develop the respiratory strength, then you can start the pranayama part of the practice. But don't rush, yeah? So the essence of this lecture is how you can start and then sustain it without too much complexity. And then just read through the rest of uh, the lesson, yeah, this article, and post it to get, together with this lecture. And hopefully, they'll be able to guide you yeah, to a smooth sailing yeah, practice at home. And let me know. I'm here to assist you. I value your support. And yeah, don't hesitate. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Namaste. Namaste.